Good morning. I thought we might look at the story of Joseph this morning from the point of view that God can turn some bad things into good for us. Now, I'm not talking about the most awful things which happen from which no good can come. In that situation, we don't recover and all we can do is ask God to help us endure until the kingdom comes when he will put things right for us. But some bad things happen and they can turn into good. And this is the case in the story of Joseph. Now, a little bit of background to Joseph's story. His father, Jacob, had a very difficult life. He slaved for 14 years for his father-in-law. And when his sons grew up, they proved to be somewhat of a disappointment for one reason or another. Rachel gave birth to Joseph and Joseph became beloved of Jacob. Rachel also gave birth to Benjamin, but unfortunately she died in the process. So Joseph, at a very young age, loses his mother. And probably because of that, he must have drawn very close to his father and his young brother. Now, Joseph became beloved of Jacob and Jacob gave him a special coat. This was probably not the wisest thing that Jacob ever did. And Joseph's brothers grew to become quite jealous of him. And to make matters worse, Joseph has a couple of dreams. And here we have one of them. Remember that Joseph is about 16 or 17 here. And he's naive and doesn't realize what his words are going to do, what effect they will have. And here we are in chapter 37 of Genesis and verse 6. Listen, he says to this dream that I had. We were binding sheaves in the countryside and my sheaf, it seemed, rose up and stood erect. And I saw your sheaves gather round and bow to my sheaf. Well, his brothers were really upset about this and they said, so you want to be king over us, do you? They developed quite a hatred of Joseph and Joseph had another dream. And once again, in his naivety, he was just telling them what this dream was. And this time he said, look, in my dream, I thought I saw the sun, the moon and 11 stars bowing down to me. Now, even his father, Jacob, remonstrated him about this dream and said, do you really want your father, your mother and, and your brothers to bow down to you? However, Jacob kept these sayings in his heart because he was beginning to realise that God was with Joseph in this matter. <clears throat> so at 17 years of age, Joseph is sent to find his brothers. Now they're looking after flocks and they go away for weeks on end. And Joseph is a uh, Jacob, sorry, is getting worried about them, sends Joseph to find out where they are and how they are. And Joseph eventually finds them in the region of Dothan. Now, Dothan is a little town, but it's in a very flat, wide plain. There are mountains around it, but they're in the distance. So when Joseph approaches them, they can see him from quite a distance away and they start scheming. We're in chapter 37 and verse 18. And they say to themselves, here comes that man of dreams. Let us kill him, throw him in some well and we'll say that a wild beast has devoured him. And then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. Now. Reuben, the eldest, had made quite serious mistakes in his life and might have learnt from them. And he, in this case, asks his brothers, no, we're not going to kill him. We're going to, we'll just put him in this well, a dry well. Reuben had it in his mind to save his young brother from the older ones. So what happens is that this is what happens. They grab hold of Joseph and they throw him in the well. Now, we learn later on that Joseph begged for mercy. He begged for compassion from them, but they didn't listen. At this point, 
a caravan of Ishmaelites come along. The brothers here shepherding sheep, sheep on a trade route. So they would see these caravans from time to time going down to Egypt. And Judah, while, ben, while Reuben sorry, is absent, he says to his brothers, we don't have any profit in killing our young brother. Let's sell him to this caravan of traders and we'll make a bit of profit, which they do. And they gain 20 silver pieces. So poor Joseph, he's dragged out of the well. That's one good thing. But he's sold to these Ishmaelites and he's taken down into Egypt. Now, he sold probably at a great profit because Joseph is young, he's strong and obviously very capable and a very worthwhile slave. And he's bought by Potiphar. Now, Potiphar is a man of rank. He's the chief of Pharaoh's bodyguard and he can see the benefit in having Joseph as a slave. And we notice in chapter 39 and verse 2 that Yahweh was with Joseph and everything went well with him. So he lodged in the house of his Egyptian master and things turned out so well. God blessed him so much that Potiphar eventually leaves everything in his hand. So in this instance, God is working things out and things are not easy for Joseph, but God has made it possible for Joseph to bear this. And he makes his situation not too bad. And Joseph, at this point, becomes master over the whole of Potiphar's household. So not a too bad a situation. What this leads to, we'll find out next week, or you can read the rest of the story yourselves. But thank you so much for watching and may God help you as he helped Joseph through very difficult times. God bless.